Did you know that Arya Rabag, the rabbinic thug who considers himself Haredi, actually lends his approval to non-glot meat? Well, in just a few moments, I will show you how he also boasts about giving his approval to non-glot gets. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to my next very short video. Most of you already know that this channel is dedicated to exposing the rampant corruption in modern-day rabbinic courts and especially in matters of Jewish divorce. What I have for you today is one such corrupt rabbinic judge, Arye Rabag, who has been recently caught admitting on an Israeli Haredi channel that he has no qualms whatsoever about coercing a get, despite it being not, despite it not being allowed, as we all know. Now, for those of you watching this channel for the first time, I encourage you to watch my other videos in order to understand the halachas relating to Jewish divorce. In any case, I will link for you below numerous letters from rabbis of previous generations which both prohibit and invalidate gittin procured through coercive tactics. For all of you women out there who are watching this video and who may be involved in the business of receiving a get, you need to know that you must be prudent in obtaining a get that was given willingly by your husband without coercion. Otherwise, you risk violating the grave sin of Aishas Ish, one of the most serious sins in the Torah, where the Allah states, Yaharek ve'al Yavor, meaning you must be willing to even give up your life and not violate it. Additionally, any children born after receiving a coerced get will render them mamzerim. So without further ado, let us get into the aforementioned video clip where Wabag openly admits to his methods of coercion. I will link for you below the actual website posted in this video, which I am about to play for you. It is in Hebrew, so I will endeavor to translate it for you. By the way, pay very close attention to his yarmulke, the large one perched on top of his head. This type is usually worn only by the great Russia yeshivas such as Rav Moshe Feinstein, and Rav Aaron Cutler, rabbis who themselves would never ever put their holy stamp of approval on either non glot meat or non glot gitten, as this phony Rabag does. <laughs> עוד נעסוק בתארים, בשלל התארים של הרב, אבל לפני זה אנחנו רוצים לפתוח איפה הרב רואה את הבעיה של ה... יש בעיה של עגונות, בעיה של גירות. איפה הבעיה המרכזית, הנקודה המרכזית שהרב מצביע עליה ואומר, זו הנקודה שצריכים לטפל בה? מה שצריכים לטפל בו היום, מה שאני חושב, בתי דין, זאת בעיית העגונות. בעיית העגונות בארץ, ברוך השם יכול לטפל, באמריקה זה קשה מאוד. אנחנו יושבים, אז עושים אה, לילות כימים כדי לפתור בעיית העגונות. ולכן גם אין את הסנקציות שיש בישראל. אני, נכון, אבל אני מדבר על אנשים שנמצאים בארצות הברית. Mm -hmm. וצריכים לפעמים לעשות גיטין שאנשים נמצאים בחורים, בבתי כלא, ולא נותנים לאף אחד להיכנס. וכותבים לצרף כל מיני אה, אופנים כדי להתיר עגונה. איך הרב באמת בלי סנקציות, איך הרב מצליח לעבוד בלי סנקציות? איך כופין אותו? איך כופין? אני לא יכול לדבר איך כופין אותו, בגלל שפעם היו כופים באמריקה, אנחנו רק כופים לפי חוקי המדינה. עכשיו יש לי שאלה מאחד שנמצא מסרב גט בדובאי, ושם אנחנו נוציא פסק דין, ושם כופים אותו לשים אותו בכלא, אם יש פסק דין. אם נגיד עכשיו יש פסק דין. יש פסק דין קביל בארזנדה, רק אחרי פסק דין. אם זה יכול לקבוע, זה על כאלה. אבל מה שאנחנו, יש לנו חידוש גדול בעגונות, זה באמסטרדם. באמסטרדם אנחנו קיבלנו רשות מהממשל דרך העורדים שלנו, העורדים גאון, לונגשטיין, שהבית משפט החילוני מכיר בבית דין שלנו לעגונות, ואם אני מזמין בעל בכל אירופה לבוא לבית דין שלנו, הוא לא מגיע. בית משפט יעשה קנס, לא שעוד לא נותן גט, עד מאה אלף יורו. על אי הופעה... אז יש לכם סנקציות, הרב. ואם הוא גם לא מופיע, 
אז הם מוכנים לשים אותו בכלא עד שנה, על אי ההופעה בפניי. אחרי שמופיעים אצלי, ויש פסק דין, אם הוא לא מקיים את הפסק דין, אז בית משפט אומר... זה חדש הדבר הזה? זה חדש? כן, זה חדש. אחד הדברים המרכזיים שאנחנו שומעים כאן... רגע, תן לי ללמוד את זה. אחרי שעושים פסק דין, אז הבית דין, הבית משפט אומר, עשה מה שהבית דין אומר לך. ואם אומרים שיהיו גט, אז גם כופים גט. לא בשוטים, אבל בכלא, בסנקציות. רק אחרי פסק דין. בית משפט אומר, עשה מה שהבית דין אומר לך. So in the video you just watched, Rabag was asked by two reporters about what he sees as being the greatest challenge of his career, to which he replied, the problem of a gunot. Rabag acknowledges that in Israel they solved this problem already because they can apply coercive measures such as imprisonment. But in the US, on the other hand, he doesn't have these methods at his disposal. Rabag does admit that once upon a time in America, he was able to use coercion, but not any longer. By that, he was referring to the good old days where he and Mendel Epstein were arranging the kidnap and torture of husbands in order to extract a get. But that, this practice is no longer allowed. The truth is that this was never allowed, both by American law and by halacha, but Rabag and Epstein had simply gotten away with it for years and years until the FBI finally caught up with them. See my videos entitled Mendel Epstein, the Notorious Rabbinic Gangster, and Arya Rabag, the Railroading Backstabbing Gangster, linked below for more information about these unsavory characters. As the video clip continues, Rabag boasts to his interviewers that he has arranged for a husband in Dubai to be imprisoned for refusing a get but he seemed to derive the most satisfaction by gloating about his accomplishments in Amsterdam, where he persuaded a high-powered lawyer to enact a law to the effect that if someone from the entire European continent merely fails to appear before Obag's Besden, that he can, he can be fined 100,000 euros. And if subsequently he refuses to give a get, well then he might even be in prison. Rabag then emphasizes that he doesn't use batons to beat up a man, only imprisonment. So in essence, what we have here is a heretic rabbi with a proclivity to dress up like a great sage of yesteryear. In so doing, he portrays himself to the public as if he belongs to the exclusive rabbinic club of great Talmudic sages, but at the same time he openly admits to breaking serious religious law. Chazal say that a pig lays down with its forelegs stretched out in front of everyone as if to say, look people, I'm kosher, I have split hooves, but it's what you can't see on the outside, namely that the pig does not chew its cud, which truly reveals its nature, rending it as unkosher. Similarly, Ralbach's saintly looking yarmulke cannot hide who he really is and what he stands for. First of all, he approves the non-glod Hebrew national hot dogs for consumption, calling them kosher. Someone who is in possession of only a minuscule Torah education who wishes to purchase kosher meat will stumble and buy this product because of Robag's meaningless stamp of approval. And when it comes to matters of Gittin, I have explained many times that any coercion, whether by shaming, imprisonment, false seruvim, or by beatings, are all rendered equal in the eyes of Allah and are strictly forbidden. Robag's insistence that his methods of imprisonment or imposing hefty fines are permitted because they don't involve the use of nightsticks to beat up a man, is pure heresy and anti halacha Anyone who truly believes in the Torah and desires to give or receive a kosher get must be made aware of Rabag's odious opinion about kosher midashgacha, as well as his history going back years in the procurement of coerced gitten. May Hashem protect us all from these corrupt ayamen and redeem us soon from this long exile. Thank you all for watching and please tell a few friends about this channel. Although it's been a while since my last video and although I've been very busy of late, I can assure you that I'm definitely not going away. There is too much work left undone in the matter of educating the public about Jewish divorce. So I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.